Hi and welcome to yet another episode of Hair Talks at Terra Medical. My name is Dr. Joshua Chong and the topic we'll be discussing today is minoxidil in depth. Why is it not working for you and what else can you do to make it work? Three, two, one. So first of all, we have to clarify that minoxidil is not truly a topical application. What minoxidil lotion or spray or foam is, it's a transdermal medication. What I mean by that is that a topical lotion would be only exerting its medical effects on the area that you apply it on. However, minoxidil has been proven to be more of a systemic medication in that it absorbs into your bloodstream and has effects on the overall body as well. Used as lotion or spray, we find that about 50% of people would tell us that I'm not getting such great results or all it does is stopping the hair loss, it's not actually promoting hair growth. Now this could be due in part to the deficiency of a certain enzyme in your system called SULT1A1. Now you don't have to remember names here, but what this enzyme does is at the hair follicle level, it converts minoxidil to minoxidil sulfate which is responsible for its hair growth properties. If you're somebody who has been using minoxidil topically for a number of years and found that the effects on hair growth are not that great, you may want to consider a different way of administering the minoxidil. Oral minoxidil has gained popularity with hair restoration surgeons in the recent years because oral minoxidil is much more absorbable than topical minoxidil. To illustrate a point, Minoxidil is poorly soluble in solution and even when mixed in alcohol, you get a maximum of a 5% solution. That corresponds with 50 mg per ml of solution. The recommended dose is to use 1 ml twice a day. Absorption rates of minoxidil are roughly 1.5 to 4% at its best. And therefore 1.5 to 4% of 50 mg of minoxidil per ml would result in only 0.75 mg to 2 mg being absorbed. However, absorption through the gut is known to be more than 90%. Therefore, taking 2.5 mg of minoxidil in the capsule version is known to give you much higher plasma or blood levels than using a topical version of minoxidil. Now here's the complicated part. When you swallow a pill of minoxidil, it goes down into your gut, absorbs through your liver, and your liver changes it to minoxidil sulfate as well, this time by a different enzyme called SULT2A1. This minoxidil sulfate in the bloodstream is responsible not only for hair growth, but it also can cause effects on your blood vessels, making them expand and causing a lowering of the blood pressure. Dosing of oral minoxidil should be closely supervised by a hair restoration practitioner in order to get the correct levels of minoxidil without causing a drop in blood pressure. Okay, now what happens to the minoxidil sulfate that's now in your blood after your liver has processed it? It only stays in the bloodstream for about 30 minutes and that's hardly enough time for it to get to diffuse into your hair follicle cells. So does oral minoxidil actually play that big a role in terms of increasing hair growth rates? The conclusion so far is that more studies need to be done. Head-to-head -head trials between uh, using topical minoxidil as well as oral minoxidil. The summary point here would be that if you have been using minoxidil in a lotion form or in a dropper form for some period of time and you're seeing less than desirable results, it's probably time for you to seek a consultation with a hair restoration practitioner who's familiar with the use of oral minoxidil to see if you can achieve better hair growth results with this formulation. In more interesting news, there have been trials about using under the tongue or sublingual minoxidil which is still an area of research but sounds very promising because it actually allows more minoxidil to get to the hair follicle before it's converted to minoxidil sulfate and exert its hair growth effects just directly on the hair after oral dosing. In conclusion, minoxidil is a very well-researched medication. It's been on the market for many many decades and it's used in various contexts to treat androgenetic alopecia very effectively. Nevertheless, there will be a group of people who do not respond to either the topical or oral version of minoxidil, and such patients should be counseled on other available hair growth boosters that are FDA approved, such as low level like laser therapy, or such as using uh, treatments like regenerative medicine, PRP, or Regenera Activa. 
We'd like to hear about your experiences. If you've been using minoxidil for a period now of either an oral form or a topical dosing and you've not been experiencing good results from it or have gotten severe side effects or untoward skin reactions to it, please let us know. Um, do comment in the comment section below and we'll try to answer as many of your questions as possible. Also remember to click like and subscribe and we'll see you next time on Hair Talks. Bye!